Hey, get it, guys. Calvin from the Catching Company in New Zealand. Today I'm going to have a look at some log files. We'll have a bit of an, anal an analysis. If you're not running an aftermarket computer, or you're not really into this sort of stuff, this is probably going to be pretty boring. But for those of you who've got an ECU that has logging ability, especially if it's a link, we're going to run through some of the processes and give you a little bit more knowledge of how the system works and what you can do with it. The subject matter today is a young guy who's been setting up a car. Uh, he's over in Oregon. And I was in Oregon this year. Um, I was taken over to work on a sprint boat. Fortunately, the boat engine wasn't ready. But I had a good trip anyway. Some good time away. And um, actually, while I was over there with some log files and bits and pieces, I was able to solve a few cars problems and it's this sort of technology and the ability to flick log files around so people can look at them and um, makes a big big difference with the sprint boats my main job is to be the data geek so i download analyze the data after every run to try and check everything's right um, check the the health of the engine and to make a decision where we go forward and optimize the engine running for that day. Of course, with a road car, the idea is you set up a, a tune or a profile, as we're going to call it a little bit, um, that suits all conditions and operates well over all conditions, so the car runs as good as it can. And now, I've got to say, this car that we're working on, it's fast. It goes to drift events, it's coming up really well, it's performing well, but it's got a couple of issues. And I don't want you to think that the because we're looking at the issues and finding things wrong, that that's a bad thing. There's lots of good stuff in it, but we want to make it run as well as it can and sort out some of these basics to ensure that it goes good for a long, long time. So let's get into it. I've got my laptop in front of me. I'm going to change myself into a, a little tiny bit in the corner and run over some logging. Let's have a look. Okay, guys. So I've opened up PC Link. We've got to get some information happening on here. I'm going to go to File, Open, and the tune was sent to me. This is the tune right here. Once you've got your computer connected, and of course I'm not connected to the car at the moment. The car's on the other side of the world. But you can download logging files. So you go logging, providing it is set up. We can have a look at that. We can actually have a look in here in the setup logging. <clears throat> ECU logging. And these here are the parameters, once it happens, that are getting logged. So we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces of information being logged. And that may not actually be enough for what we're trying to do. But for right now, it will be enough. But in the future, we may want to add some more stuff to that. I'm also going to open the log file. So Brian's gone to ECU log file download, downloaded the file, and I'm going to open that up. It emailed to me, there it is right there. So if I look in here, there's some logging. Those aren't really helpful to me. I go display mode up here and I go log analysis. Here's some that I've set up. There we have his log file. So we have a whole lot of information that's happening about this engine. And I've set up a few different screens that allow me to, to analyze what I want to analyze. And I've based it just on this data. If you don't know how to set that up, we can go over a video of that if, if required. Just going to go back to the ECU. Here it is here. And I could put them all on the one screen. It's just I prefer to put them, keep them a little bit more separate. So here is his tune profile. And the main information I want to look at at the moment, to keep this pretty basic, is we're going to go show ECU statistics. Now Brian actually managed to get, uh, I think it was a second place at a drift event on the weekend. So 
It's got to be pretty proud with that. So it's got how many times he's bounced off the rev limiter. It's not a whole lot. Possibly because the rev limiter is set quite high. Maximum RPM, 6944. Also a note with the rev limiter, each time it hits it, bung, bup, 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 that is counts on the rev counter, on the rev limit counter. Coming down here, maximum map, 103. It's close to 100, so I'm not too bothered about that at the moment. Injector DC, max primary injector duty cycle. 94.3%. So he's using all of his injectors. Um, so that that's a sign that uh, it's certainly on the limit. And it kind of uh, raises the question is if you turbo on a standard computer, how are you going to put more fuel in? You're relying on more fuel pressure to do so. Could also be an indication if he's running extremely rich though, you would use more duty cycle than you really need to. Um, Max ECT, 116 degrees, so he's certainly at the top end, realistically over the limit of what that engine should be running at. Inlet air temp, 68 degrees. That's not too bad if it's, it's idling and it's got a, a cold air intake, which is a, a metal tube that runs over the hot side of the engine, above the exhaust, behind the radiator, they're going to get hot. But what is it running when he's driving it? So we'll look at that. Max voltage. Houston, we have a problem. 16.71 volts. Well more than it should be. Ideally not over 15. So we've got a little issue there. So I think that's where we're going to focus on today. Running time. Number of starts and the number of stores. So let's look at some logging here. And we'll look at that voltage. So we're going to go, this is a very, very basic one from the link setup. But I went through and I, I set up a couple of bits of logging for uh, just for Brian's ECU. And it's based on the information that I got out of the ECU. So I couldn't put a, things like oil pressure, couldn't be added at this stage because I had Brian's tune loaded up or his data loaded up. So very quick look at temperature. This log, it looks like the hottest temp up here is, is around about here. So this one's really simple. I've got battery voltage, engine speed, and um, engine temp. At the bottom, it's the whole run. So that's the, the navigator of the whole, all the data I've got. And at the moment, I've got the, all of the data displayed on my screen. Yep, I have. If I use my up key or my down key, it will expand and contract the data. I want to focus on this area here. And you'll notice that the navigator down here is changing. So we've only got from that point to that point on this screen. I'm just going to move this over here like this, center this up. And we'll continue to expand it out. And maybe we'll look at just that bit of data right there. I can grab it from the bottom as well. So this is the, the bit of data. We've got engine temp at the top. And I've put a parameter list over here so you can see it as well. And some runtime lists of all the data at the bottom. So here is before he starts the run. Time. Mm. Minute 20 from, from here to here. It's about a minute 20. So we're sitting here and the temperature is at 98 degrees already. So before he starts his run, it's already sitting at 98 degrees, which is pretty hot. Brings it along and he starts to rev it. Rev's coming up. 6,000 RPM. 97, it's actually dropped back as it's flowing a little bit of water, um, pushing it out of the radiator, into the engine, and then it starts to climb. So 98 degrees there. So 40 seconds into his run, it's 40 seconds into his run, we've gained 
from uh, 97 to 103, 6 degrees. It's continually climbing. So towards the end of the run, we're at 108 degrees. And that's probably the last bit of revs there. Right there, it's at 110 degrees. So that's pretty, pretty bloody hot. Coming up, 113 is where it peaks after the run. And then after five minutes, oh, let's see, no, 41. So there's three minutes later. Three minutes later, it's still at 108. So the fans on it aren't cooling it down very fast at all. It's taking a long time to cool it down. But I don't think the radiator is possibly up to the job. Or airflow, maybe. So there's something that needs to be addressed in that department. But the big problem I wanted to look at was this battery voltage. So down here, on that same piece of data that we were looking at, we've got battery voltage. We've got battery voltage here, here, and in the run times down here that I set up. So sitting at idle, we've got 12 volt. Now, battery voltage should be 12.8, ideally. Then when you start it, we'd like to see it go over 13. Then 13 to 14. 14 would be nice, but I don't want it over 15. We did see in the statistics, we had that uh, spike at 16, showing there's an issue there. But let's look at this. We've got 12 volts at idle. So straight away, the ECU isn't getting enough voltage. Brian has already checked his alternator, putting out 13 volts. So between the alternator and the ECU, we've lost over a volt. And then when he starts to rev it, look what happens. So he's starting to rev it here. The battery voltage is dropping. So by the time he's doing 6,700 RPM, we've got 10 and a half volts. As he drops his revs drop off, the voltage comes back up to 12. But each time he revs it, we're into the tens. And that's not 10 second quarters, that's 10 volts. Just touching into the 10 volts there. So straight away, we've got a problem. If I was working on that car, I've just stopped tuning. I'm not going to tune a car that has got insufficient voltage. It means less voltage to the injectors. It means less voltage to the fuel pump, depending on how it's wired. Less voltage to the ECU. Nothing's working like it should. Less voltage to the coils. So all those need to be checked, and that voltage issue needs to be found. First put of call would be to check the alternator. He's done that. He's got voltage to the alternator. A good battery is really important. Though the system should be reading what the alternator is reading. Regardless of battery condition, it should be reading it. One way to do it would be just to pop a battery in it. And you should find this very similar results. Hey, you might be lucky. But chances are there's a bad connection somewhere. Or a bad earth. So all that needs to be addressed. So pretty much, that's uh, we're going to stop there. If I was working on that uh, vehicle, I've had it in the sprint boat where I see little spikes. And we can actually show a spike on a startup. And this vehicle's having the odd starting issue. So I'll just bring the back here. So here's a start. Let's get a couple of starts nice and close together. Oh, I don't want that. So I've just grabbed that piece there. No, don't want to grab properties, and brought it into our into our screen. So here we have the vehicle sitting. This is a stop start point on this red line. Might be a little hard to see. And we start that engine up. I'll just expand it out. And we can see here there's a big drop in that voltage on startup. In my thinking. 10 volts is my minimum. If it goes below 10 volts, 
I'm putting another battery in it. Simple, providing it's sitting at least 12.6, ideally 12.8 resting back voltage, voltage for the battery. Then you go to crank it, 10 volts, we're okay. Below 10 volts, we need to change it. Below 8 volts, definitely need to change it. Below 9 volts, definitely need to change it. At about 7.5, the ECU won't fire. It will not start. So if it was a cold morning, cooler morning, battery's been sitting all night, there's a good chance that this vehicle is going to be very hard to start. Let's look at this voltage. 12.28 down to 8.6 at the bottom there. So that's on a startup. Way, way too low. So that is a big issue that needs to be resolved. And as I said, I stop. As soon as we've got a battery voltage problem like that, I will not continue tuning. Of course, other things in the logging is mixture. So we've got mixture, lambda there, lambda here, with targets and RPM. We've got intake air. All those things can be looked at. But for today, I think we're going to call that a call that enough. Let's look at some battery voltage. Get some battery voltage looked at. But I will come back soon and do another one on some mixture, maybe some comparing maps, so you can get some better knowledge of how to use your Link ECU and how to use your logging to maximize it, make the most of, of your diagnosing and setting up your tune. So I hope that was helpful, and we'll talk to you again. Catch you later.